Hey everybody, this here is a Galaxy Model 2150 12-inch oscillating desk fan. And it might look a bit familiar to you. You may have seen this exact fan before, or so you think. Well, actually, no. <laughs> this is a completely different one. Um, I got this one today um, for $5 at the Savers. So, yeah, ironically, the same exact price as I got the other one for. Um, now, I do have the other one sitting right here to prove that this is a different one, um, but I'm going to get into the differences between these two um, in a short minute. So, um, first of all, I got into like a lot of detail about the timeline of where these stood and everything in the last video of this one, so I'm probably not going to go over that again because of basically just being restating what I've already said. So, um, this one is, it's basically just your average um, model 2150 um, this is what I call a third gen galaxy as you can see it has the um, amber colored blades the transparent blades the uh, brown colored switch plate badge with the buttons that darken from tan to uh, brown as the speeds progress the brown badge with the galaxy written in silver with the in the lower lowercase um, just like block lettering, the earlier logo. Um, yeah, and the base is like a nice beige almond color. So I'm gonna turn it to the side. And as you can see, it has the very squared off cage, which was typical of the third and fourth generation models. Um, the earlier ones were kind of more rounded. Um, it has the one-piece motor housing and the later oscillator knob that snaps on. Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to get the oscillator knob off for some reason. This one's snapped right off. I don't know what this one's issue is. So I wasn't able to oil the back bearing, but I did oil the front bearing. Um, and I did clean it and everything. So it's not all dusty and filthy anymore. Um, on the back, you can see it also has the perimeter vents on the motor housing. Um, and then... On the bottom, whoops, upside down. Here is the sticker for the with the information, the model or the type, style and voltage, as well as the UL sticker. Whoa, almost dropped the camera. And then up here is what I believe is the date code. Now this one is it says three three two five four, so maybe nineteen eighty four. But the uh, strange thing about that is this one here is also stamped. This one's 41583. Um, I don't know if that means this one's uh, from 83 or not, but I doubt that because I'll get to actually, let me put them side by side first here. Um, if I can get it off of the cord. Okay. There we go. So you can see they are side by side, um, and they're identical, like exact same fan. You can see there's a little bit of a difference in the condition. This one's chrome is missing on the center badge, and this one's still got it for the most part. Um, the blades are both uh, pointed tip, which is the the later style that they had, um, unlike the earlier, the rounded, like on that one, the ambassador over there. But uh, yeah. Now the interesting thing, as you can see, this one's base is a little bit lighter too. I didn't even notice that. This one must have spent some time in the sun. Um, if I unplug this one here real quick, and if I take this one's plug, so this is the plug from this one, and this is the plug from this one. You can see the clear difference here. This one's plug looks fairly older. Um, it has the LMP and that funny logo on the front there. I've seen plugs like this before um, and nothing on the inside there. This one is the much more uh, generic later style plug um, that still a, ver a version of this is still used to be. But it does say, I just noticed, it does say LMP too. doesn't have that logo though on this side. And it says in the middle... Oh, that's just like model information, but that's just something that I found that was interesting. So, going back to the date stamp on the bottom of this one, this one can't be 1983, from my opinion at least,
because uh, that plug looks fairly newer. This one I don't know about. I really don't know. Um, honestly, I'm not exactly sure when either of these are from. I don't think they would be from the early 80s, probably from like the mid to late 80s, especially for this one here with the later plug, but I'm not an expert on these. So let's put the old one or quote unquote old one that I already had to the side and plug in the one, this one. Now, I'm going to give a demonstration of this one. Now, when I got it, the grill was flipped upside down. It did ha it does have all of its cage clips, thankfully, but it did have one twisty tie for some reason. I don't know why people insist on twisty tying the grills shut on these. Um, it's not that hard to remove the cage clips with a screwdriver. Just stick it up there, pry it off. Um, if you stick the it in here you try to pry it off from here you could break it so just a tip on getting the cage clips out but yeah it's in relatively good condition um i'm probably not going to keep both of them i'm probably going to end up selling or giving one away um i don't know i already have a potential buyer so we'll see what happens but um that's been enough talking so let's go ahead and start this one up on high and it does have a a little bit of a startup noise, but not not too much. And it's a good thing I'm wearing a sweatshirt because this fan is moving so much air. I'd be very cold if I wasn't. I am already cold wearing the sweatshirt with this thing blowing on me on high. So once again, not at all surprised because these are generally very good performers really really high quality fans so medium and the buttons are nice and crisp they push in and lock in too and low Do a spin down from low. That's not that bad at all, actually. I was expecting it to be a lot shorter. So I'm going to engage the oscillator and this time start it up on low. It is sticking just a little bit. I might have to put some oil in the, the pivot pin on the neck bracket where it pivots left and right. That's what was wrong with this one. If you remember in my other video, this one kept going like that every time it would go to the right or whatever. Um, it was because the pivot point and the plastic neck bracket was uh, dry, needed some oil. This one's not too bad, so... Turn it on medium. And high. I love the fast oscillation arc speed of these. They just whoosh, whoosh back and forth. Okay, that's enough blowing all the papers around in here. Um, so I'm gonna spin down from high. probably could use some oil in that back bearing if I could ever get that oscillator knob off. Um, so yeah, 
Um, there's one more thing I wanted to show that I completely forgot to mention on my initial uh, overview is the back here. Notice there is no handle anywhere, not on the back of the motor housing, not on the, the back grille anywhere. On this one is the exact same. And I thought that was like a manufacturing error on this one when I got it. Apparently, nope, that's just something Galaxy did. And it's evident in this one, as this one also doesn't have a handle. So I just don't know why they didn't include a handle on the late models. But that's, again, evidence that they were starting to cheapen their fan designs in later years. So um, I think that actually, let me try to get that startup sound on high for you once more here. Yeah. It's not that much of a startup noise, but you get the idea. So I think that is going to conclude this video. Um, that is the overview and testing of this possibly older Amber Galaxy 12-inch fan, Model 2150, as well as a bit of touching up on the slightly newer one here, the other one. But, um, yeah, I'm very happy to have these two. Um, as I said, I won't be keeping them both, so... Yeah, that is, once again, it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and more to come.